Well, Pentecost Sunday, love Pentecost. What is Pentecost? It's the overwhelming Holy Spirit overflow for everyone. It's the end of external striving to be like God. Pentecost is the overflow of heaven within you. It is living with the breath of God blowing up on you, in you, and through you. Pentecost is the voice of Holy Spirit within you crying out, Abba, Father. It is the voice of Holy Spirit within testifying that you are a child of God and not only a child but an heir and a fellow heir with Christ. It is the comfort that can't be humanly explained or even understood but is more real than the air that you breathe. Pentecost is overwhelming light bursting from within, shattering the darkness of the world. Pentecost is perfect, undefined, pure love of heaven bubbling up from within and obliterating fear and hatred. Pentecost is the peace, the perfect peace of heaven, the very shalom of abundant prosperity, eliminating lack, confusion, and anxiety. Pentecost is deep wells of joy, Melting away heaviness and mourning. Pentecost is the grace to wait and step far above frustration and anger. Pentecost is releasing the kindness of the kiss of Jesus that displaces the harshness of the world. Pentecost is the goodness of a good God overwhelming all that is bad and destructive. Pentecost is the faithfulness of God filling you with faith to finish and never stop moving forward till you fulfill all that God has called you to. Pentecost is gentleness like an oil that covers all that you do with a humble, graceful boldness. Pentecost is self-control that strengthens you to continually choose the yes of the Spirit Instead of the lower fleshly desires. Pentecost is the end forever of trying and a life of receiving and releasing the treasure from within. Pentecost is a fire of holy confidence that burns away timidity. And Pentecost is the overwhelming God consciousness that lifts us out of the web of self-consciousness and self-focus. Pentecost is the grace to live in healthy relationships. Pentecost brings us into the fullness of who we are created to be. And Pentecost is the Spirit of the Lord making Jesus real to us personally and making us powerful, making Him powerful through us to the world. This morning, I want to talk about Holy Spirit intoxication. The Holy Spirit longs to fill you more. We're here, most of us in this room, because we have experienced some of the Spirit of God, even today. But but God has so much more for us. And Holy Spirit longs to fill you. And intoxicate you with his presence. He wants to overwhelmingly intoxicate you with his presence. And so I want to look this morning in Ephesians 5.18. And I want to just pull apart Ephesians 5.18, 19, 20, and 21. In Ephesians 5.18 it says, Do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation, but be filled with wine. The Spirit. Now, I want to give us a little context from the time that the people were living in, as it says, do not be drunk with wine. Many of the people worshiped the god Dionysus, and, and he was the god of wine. And so, in, the, in these festivals, it was about drink and becoming drunk, and the hope was that the spirit of this god would enter you and fill you. And that, that they believed that that would give them strength and wisdom and ability beyond themselves. They believed even that it would give them ability to speak and say things. 
And it, many times it resulted in the person doing what they thought was the will of God, willingly or unwillingly. And so this was the culture. When, when Paul is saying, do not be drunk with wine, he's saying, hey, I, I don't want you, I don't want you to join into that and being drunk with wine, for that is dissipation. And in the Greek, this is the word sozo, say sozo. Many of you know this word. It actually means life. It is the word life with an A on the front of it, an alpha, which negates it. So it's saying don't get drunk with wine, for that's not life. That's not salvation. That's not going to bring about wholeness. It's not (laughs) so-so. So don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Look at the person next to you and say, be filled. Now, don't be surprised if they are. So that is a, that is a Greek word there, and I, I'm, not, I'm just really going to pull this apart. And I just felt this morning that Holy Spirit is going to do some really intense things in a few moments. And I felt like that he also just wanted some really clear Bible teaching. And uh, so here we go. And I sometimes need to do something to prove that it was worth it to take my four years of Greek. So this is a second person plural, present passive imperative. Boom. Did you feel the anointing on that? I didn't really either, but. So one, it's imperative. Say imperative. It's the mood of command. And what it means is this is not optional. Jesus said to his disciples who had been through his three-year discipleship course, he said, guys, you're not ready yet. I need you to wait for this. So this is not an optional thing. And the other thing about it being a command, which is really good news, is that this means that God wants to do it. When God commands something, He wants to do it. So Holy Spirit longs to fill you. We don't have to beg Holy Spirit to fill us. Thank goodness we don't have to try to get our act together for Holy Spirit to fill us. Holy Spirit wants to fill you because of the finished work of Jesus on the cross. Completely based on what Jesus did on the cross. So Holy Spirit longs to fill you. And it is also a plural, that should say plural there, that this is for everyone. It's for every single one of us. It's not a, not a singular verb. Paul is speaking to the church. He's saying, hey, church, be filled with the Holy Spirit, all of you. This is for every one of us. Look at someone and say, hey, it's for you too. This is for all y'all. There we go. They're translated into the local dialect. Now some of you are with me. All right. But it's also present tense. This is not something that we can look back and just say, well, that's great. I was filled with the Holy Spirit in 1981. No, I, I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit continually. And Holy Spirit is in me to intoxicate me to make Jesus real, to fill me. To, so to stay drunk, you got to keep drinking. It's a very basic this morning. And to stay filled, you got to keep on, you got to keep on being filled with the Spirit. And to live drunk, you got to drink all the time. And so I want to help us this morning be better drinkers. I believe there's some drinkers in the room. And I, I want to help us because there's... There's an atmosphere that we create in us that says, Holy Spirit, I want you to totally possess and saturate every cell of my being. So you were created to live in a state of continual Holy Spirit intoxication. This this whole Christianity, Jesus thing does not work apart from living completely full of Holy Spirit. In fact, I heard a guy say once, he said, the only person who can live the Christian life is Christ himself. It's Christ in you. The Spirit of the Lord in you is the only way this thing thing works. So it's not about trying harder to do all these things. It's about being filled, allowing Holy Spirit to fill me. And when Holy Spirit fills me, I'm going to do things that I I could never do in a million years. I'm going to think thoughts that are so brilliant that you know they didn't come from me. (laughs) 
You know that's not Steve. You know that's Holy Spirit. So we're going to live intoxicated with something. Every single one of us is full of something. A lot of people, they're full of themselves. And it's about me. And it's all about themselves. Some people are living intoxicated with fear. Some are living full of lust. Some are living full of reason. It's all about what your brain can come up with and what you can figure out. And this equation and what makes sense to their brains to them is what they're allowing their life to be intoxicated with. Other people are intoxicated with busyness. It's all about staying busy and getting it done and, 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 and trying hard. And they live their lives intoxicated, running around, busy, hopefully, they think, accomplishing things. But you are going to live intoxicated with Holy Spirit. You are created for Holy Spirit. To live where every cell, where you are so full of Holy Spirit that you smell, the fragrance of the Lord is upon you, that the presence of the Lord can even be smelled through you. Holy Spirit has come to fill the temple of you. You are now the temple. You know, I, I love these, the passages in the Old Testament. Anybody love these, you know, where the glory of God comes and they cannot stand? Second Chronicles 5 says, In unison the trumpeteers and the singers were to make themselves heard with one voice to praise and glorify the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice, accompanied by the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of music, and when they praised the Lord, saying, let's say this together, He indeed is good, for His loving kindness is everlasting. Then the house of the Lord was filled with the cloud. Now, where is that temple today? Yeah, the temple's right here. That temple is us individually, and that temple is also us corporately. The very holy of holies, that holy presence of God, where the priest could not even stand to minister, is inside of you now. So the priest could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Nothing less than that present is inside of you. Wow. Wow. The glory of the Lord. And you were created. You are the temple of God. It never, God's thing was never about a physical building. It's always been about, that was a picture of what he was going to do in you. And in us as his church. So the next, write the next verse, Solomon said, The Lord said that he would dwell in the thick cloud. I have built you a lofty house and a place for your dwelling forever. And we are that dwelling forever. Acts 7, 48, Stephen preaching, he said, However, the Most High does not dwell in houses made by human hands, as the prophet said. God dwells in us. He dwells in you. Holy Spirit is now inside of you. So God's plan has always been to fill the temple of you individually, in the temple of us, corporately. That the whole earth, that every single person might encounter the presence of God because temples full of the glory of God are walking on this earth now. Living temples. That we walk just like Jesus walked, the same Spirit of the Lord that was upon Jesus Himself is upon you today. And so we walk like he walked. We do the very things he did. We breathe the very breath of heaven that Jesus himself breathed. The very fire that burned in his heart burns inside of your heart. Because of Holy Spirit. So, I want to just continue in this passage in, in Ephesians 5. It gives us five gateways to living filled and intoxicated with Holy Spirit. 
we have be filled, and then there's these five modifying participles <laughs> that are like gateways. And when I say they're gateways, they are things that happen when we are full of the Holy Spirit, but they are also things that as we agree with them, that Holy Spirit is doing them in us, they help us step into a place of greater intoxication in the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? Amen. All right, let's look at them, and then we're going to see what happens here. All right, so verse 19, speaking to one another. Say, speaking to one another. So the first one is, is making sound, speaking to one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Sounds and songs of worship. What was going on when we read 2 Chronicles chapter 5? Worship, trumpets, praise, all of that. It's not a coincidence that all of that was going on when Holy Spirit came and filled them. When you look at heaven, you look at what's going on, you look at what's being said, there are sounds. And guys, there are sounds that release things in the Spirit. There are sounds that are about to be released that are going to stir up and release the next revival that we are pregnant with. And we are carrying those sounds and Holy Spirit, we are pregnant with them and Holy Spirit is going to birth and release those sounds through us. And when that sound comes forth, the vibration of heaven, it is going to release the fresh wind of God. And the fresh fire of God. And there's a generation that's waiting for that sound. They're searching. They're searching. And that sound is going to come through us. And so there's a sound that when you release that sound, it does something. It creates that atmosphere where Holy Spirit can begin to intoxicate you. And he says here, Psalms. And Psalms are about connecting with God right where you are. When you read the Psalms, there's, it's David. One moment, he's like, God, where are you? I'm really struggling. And the next moment, he, he moves from that, and he's like, God, you're everywhere. And I love that we have a, a God that we connect with him right here where we're honest. God, I don't know where you are. And he takes us over here to God. Okay, you're here. I'm glad that we don't have to fake it when we're over here, aren't you? No, we can be real. We can be authentic. You know, I think there, there's passages in the Bible that many of us would have cut out. <laughs> but they're in there because it's real, and we have a real God. And he's not threatened by the fact that we're real people, and we're walking through real things down here. <laughs> and he's a real God in us, and we connect with him in those places. So Psalms. Hymns, declaring truth and doctrine, praising Him for who He is. Psalms, hymns, declaring the truth, the truths of Scripture as we sing and as we speak. And then spiritual songs, releasing new songs, stepping into places in the Spirit. Songs known and unknown. Songs in known and unknown tongues, groaning in the Spirit, sounds that we release that aren't sounds of the mind because we know that we have a God who goes far beyond our minds. That's why we pray in tongues. Because you need to pray things you don't know how to pray. You need to pray things that you could never come up with in a million years. And Holy Spirit within you is bubbling up in a language for you to speak that releases heavenly things. First Corinthians 14, 15. What is the outcome? I will pray with the Spirit. Context here is Paul is talking about praying with tongues. I will pray with the mind also, but I will also sing with the Spirit, and I will also sing with the mind. So we're going to sing with the Spirit also. We're going to sing in tongues. We're going to release those spiritual songs. And I like to look at it like this. We sing psalms to the Lord. We're connecting with God. We sing hymns 
about the Lord. It's important to do that. It's not all we want to do. We don't just want to sing about Him. But we sing hymns about Him. And then spiritual songs, we enter in with Holy Spirit. We get in that place of flowing with the Holy Spirit in that, and we begin to sing songs with the Spirit. And those songs are about flowing and going somewhere with Holy Spirit, that He's taking us somewhere. Isn't that amazing? Wow. What happens in these Holy Spirit temples? So be ready because we're going to do these things. You're not getting off that easy. (laughs) All right. Okay. All right. So singing is the second uh, participle here. And I just want to say that God loves your song. And the more I study this passage, it's like your song is important. Don't, whoever told you that you shouldn't sing your voice, whatever, you need to cancel that because God loves your song and he wants to hear your song. Your song releases something that my song doesn't release. Your song releases something that Justin's song doesn't release because your song carries something unique. And God wants to hear your song. And so he loves your song. So some of us are going to leave here and we're going to be singing a lot more. All right. And then it says making melody. Say making melody. All right. So that is about heart melodies, singing. Making melodies with your heart. And I love the, the Greek word here. It actually means to pluck strings. God wants to play the instrument of your heart. He wants wants to breathe on your heart and have a sound as he breathes. He wants to play the instrument of your heart with you. He wants, he what this whole thing has been about God wanting to relate with you. It's not just about you're getting something done. It's about there's a God who loves you, who loves to connect with you, who loves to hear your heartbeat, who loves to hear your breath, who loves to hear your sound, who loves to play the sound of your heart. And so there's a melody that's going to come. God wants to play the instrument of your heart. And that's what God was listening to today. It was never about how good a quality The sound was, and it was very good. (laughs) And I'm so thankful for our worship team and for all that goes in. Can we just give them a hand? All of them. And can we give our sound people and our video team back here a hand? These guys work so hard to make all this happen. And there were so many different sounds that came together to produce this, but the purpose of producing this up here was not so that you could come enjoy a nice concert. The purpose of producing this was to release a sound that would stir your heart so that you would begin to release the sound that's inside of you and that corporately we all, as the temple of God together, would release the sound of heaven And something happens when we do it together where two or three are that cannot happen just alone. And so it's important for us as the people of God to gather and release a sound, the instrument of our hearts. God is listening for the song of your heart. Verse 20, always giving thanks for all things. And so... Our fourth Holy Spirit intoxication gateway. Sounds kind of technical. I really wrestled with that language for First Family Kids Sunday, but I stuck it in there. (laughs) Giving thanks. I don't know of a quicker way to get full of Holy Spirit than to just start thanking God. 
like to just thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for this. Thank you for air to breathe. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for the people in this room. Thank you for the city. Thank you for letting me live in this moment in history. Thank you that you're within me. Thank you that you're faithful to complete the work that you've begun in me. And, and thanksgiving is, is, a, is a huge part of creating that atmosphere within us so that every cell of us can be full of Holy Spirit. And then verse 20, be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. And this brings us back to what we were doing a minute ago, that we were holding hands. Healthy relationships are part of being intoxicated with Holy Spirit. Pentecost. Pentecost could have been Peter in his prayer room alone. But Holy Spirit directed them and said, I want you to be in that upper room. I want you to pray. And 120 people together in relationship, in unity, Holy Spirit came. It's no coincidence. The Spirit of God breathes on healthy relationships. They cultivate an atmosphere. So submitting to one another, submitted to God Together in healthy relationships, we honor, value, and receive each other. I humbly recognize and connect with who you are in Christ, knowing that I am only one part of the body. I do not have it all. I am a part, and I need you. And I love what you carry. And I am looking for what you carry of Jesus. The revelation that you have of Jesus that I do not have. And I value that. And we value each other. We lift each other up. And I know that my destiny will never be fulfilled alone. But it will only be fulfilled as I live in healthy connection in the body of Christ. All right, so Holy Spirit has come to fill the temple. Yeah. <laughs> I, want us to, I want us to declare this together. It's on the screen. And when they praise the Lord, saying, He indeed is good, for His loving kindness is everlasting. Let's say that again. He indeed is good, for His loving kindness is everlasting. Let's say it again. He indeed is good, for His loving kindness is everlasting. Hallelujah! You are good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Yes. 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 Well, I want to ask our, we have ministry teams up here today, and we have children who are ready to prophesy this morning. Where are our kids' prophetic teams? Whoops, you all right? We have kids' prophetic teams who are ready to prophesy over you. And I've also got just our other ministry teams. There may be someone here you say, I don't, I still don't know what it means to be filled, baptized with the Holy Spirit. They are ready to pray with you, ready to stand with you, ready to agree with you. You may need healing in your body. We have teams ready to pray. So these kids are here to prophesy this morning. The same Holy Spirit that fills you, that fills Jesus, is in these kids. All right, we've got some more available over here. Bless you as you go. You live intoxicated with Holy Spirit. You live and breathe the breath of heaven. You live in the wind of God. And I bless the new song that is in your mouth, that you are living with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, the melody of your heart, that God is playing the instrument of your heart this week. I bless you. I bless your mouth to be filled with thanksgiving. I bless your home to be flooded 
with a new song in the presence of God. I bless you to live in healthy relationships, submitted to one another, honoring, recognizing, and receiving the body of Christ, the family of God that you are connected with. And I bless you this week to bear much fruit with new boldness, new encounters with Jesus, new places in the heavenlies this week, creative ideas that you could never come up with on your own, favor with God, favor with man, the favorable year of the Lord, and the day of the vengeance of the God, of God against everything that has been taken away from you. This is the year, the day, the time, the season of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on your life. You live full with the fire of God burning in you. And whoever gets around you, you are contagious with the fire of God. I bless you to live in the fullness of Pentecost in the name of Jesus.